Welcome to the Minnesota Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. We're so excited to have you participating in this event. We have some fantastic schools here with us today. My name is Nashira and I'll be your facilitator. Before we get started, a few housekeeping items. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to check out the, the schedule on the website. This presentation is being recorded and will be, will be available at strivescan.com forward slash Minnesota. I'd now like to turn it over to our first presenter, Marquette University. All right, thank you so much, Nashira. It's such a joy to be here with esteemed colleagues um, and um, with all of you, I think if the past year has taught us anything, it's certainly that whether we are connecting virtual, virtually or in person, it's, it's always a joy to be able to start the conversation. Um, so on that note, welcome to the next six minutes with Marquette University. My name is Hannah Bendixson. I am the admissions counselor that works with all Minnesota students. So last things first, I always love to start with my contact information, as I hope that this will be the beginning of that longer conversation as to wherever you find yourself in the college search process. So this is your license to contact me by phone, email. You can see we text these days. We're trying to be accessible in whatever way you prefer. So stay in touch. So let's jump in with some of the quick facts, obligatory stats of Marquette that nonetheless start to give a, a really great sense of, of what makes us such a special corner of the universe. So when you choose your undergraduate institution, you certainly choose the greater context in which that university resides. And we could not be more proud to be in our championship city of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Um, it's a city of about 600,000 located on the shores of the beautiful Lake Michigan. We know that Minnesotans are no um, strangers to the lake experience. So you'd be um, committing to a great lake experience, a great city and uh, the great campus that we have awaiting for you at, at Marquette. So Marquette, following in suit um, with Milwaukee, our medium-sized city is a medium-sized campus, about 8,000 undergraduate students. I love that this slide um, really encapsulates what it is to be a medium-sized institution because the numbers are small when you want them to be small and large when you want them to be large. So first and foremost, even as a medium-sized institution, we are wholeheartedly committed to still maintaining those small class sizes. We know the benefit of being able to strike up that intellectual camaraderie that comes with knowing your peers name, your faculty knowing your name, um, but more so than now what you are passionate about inside and outside of the classroom. Marquette is a Jesuit institution, um, so private Catholic institution and, and one of the expressions that the Jesuits love and stand by in terms of our academic modeling and the modeling of our, our the community orientation of our campus is cure personalis. It means tear the whole person. Um, so how we, starting with your humble admissions counselor to your faculty, your peer mentors, your advisors, your support services are all conspiring to make sure that you feel fulfilled by your undergraduate experience, mind, body, and soul. So average class size of 23 and under 14 to one student to faculty ratio. The flip side of that medium size is that you also are going to have no shortage of choices. So we have over 80 different majors for you to choose from and over 325 student organizations. So you'll get to see a good combination of familiar faces while on campus, um, but also new faces and be able to constantly expand your network and try something new. So these are our seven academic colleges we are direct admit into all of them. So what that means is that at the time that you apply to Marquette, you will choose which is the best fit for you. But it isn't to say that you can't change your mind, double, double major and minor across academic colleges, and you don't even have to declare until your second semester sophomore year. But the biggest benefit of being a direct admit institution across all seven of these is that you get to start in your major specific coursework right away. And we know that whether or not that turns out to be your perfect fit or you change your mind as a result, we're giving you that experiential take to dive in right away and then make that decision accordingly. We already talked a little bit about Milwaukee and in just a moment, I'll zoom into where you can find Marquette located in all of this. Um, so we are just a mile and a half away from that beautiful body of blue Lake Michigan. The entirety of the downtown cityscape is between our campus located on the near west side and the lake. So we are an extremely accessible city from campus. So with no accident, we really want you to be able to access those personal professional opportunities that await you downtown, which is why we will provide you with a bus pass all four years of your time at Marquette. We are walking distance from the third ward, the Pfizer Forum, which is where the Marquette men's basketball team gets to play, along with the NBA Bucks. East side downtown, where you'll be interning, spending time attending a concert or going to a museum, trying a different theater arts venue, 
friend cheese curds, you would name it. And this is where Marquette is located within it all. So students that are drawn to Marquette love that we are an urban campus by our proximity to downtown, but simultaneously we are a contained campus. That means that all of our key academic and residential buildings are within a 15 minute walk. So within a set number of blocks. We do encourage this love of campus by requiring our students to live on campus the first two years. So some of our students do certainly choose to live on campus all four years um, or to live in the neighborhoods that immediately surround Marquette's campus, which very much make us feel like a vibrant college town. Um, so please know that we are not a suitcase campus in any sense of the word. We balance out with the city of Milwaukee to make sure that while you always know that you can explore, we always have events happening on Marquette's campus, whether it's a weekend or a week night. We know that community certainly starts with showing up so we can promise you that strong campus identity. And without further ado, once again, um, please do stay in touch. Marquette is open to visitors, regardless of again, what year you are in high school, where you find yourself in that college search process. So we have everything from open houses to our general campus tours to academic department visits. If you are feeling more comfortable with the virtual options at this point in time, um, you can reach out to me to set up a virtual appointment. I also travel to the Twin Cities, so potentially I'd be able to sit across from you at a coffee table. Again, the past year has taught us that whatever format you are ready to connect in, we want to be available for you. If you'd like to talk to a current student um, and continue the conversation, making sure that Marquette is going to be a good college fit for you. So without further ado, I will pass it back to Nishira and we'll get on with our site. Thank you. Thank you so much, Marquette University. We'll now have Drake University. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Nashira. Let me just share my screen here. Okay, fabulous. Well, it's great to have everybody here today. Um, my name is Marissa Morris. I am the representative who covers most of Minnesota. Um, there's another another person, uh, Lauren Sharp, who also does parts of Minnesota, and I'll put both of our contact information there um, as well. Um, so let's get started about Drake. First things first, we have to address the fact that we have uh, a live mascot. Um, everybody asks about Griff and he is um, our hometown dog. Um, yes, he's a, a real dog. He's also in my photo here as well. So if you come to visit campus, we'd love to have you and um, you have to get a photo with Griff, it's, it's required. Um, he also is on social media at Drake U Griff. Um, so with that out of the way, we can dive into some things about Drake. First of all, we are a small to medium sized school um, located in Des Moines, Iowa. So this is really the perfect size if you're looking for a place where you'll get to know your faculty members very well and they'll know um, about you and what success looks like for you in your future, um, but also have a lot of big school opportunities because this is the largest institution um, for your institution in Des Moines. And so the opportunities that exist in Des Moines primarily come to Drake students first. Um, next up, we have a 10 to 1 student to faculty ratio. Um, our average class size, it's around 21 students. Um, so you're really learning among um, students that you'll get to know as well. Um, we also don't have any teaching assistants. All of our classes are taught by professors. And 80% um, of those professors actually have the highest uh, degree in their field. And so you're really learning from experts along this pathway. Um, one of the big school benefits is that we have over 100 different undergraduate programs. Um, these are the colleges as they're listed out. Um, the College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences has a six-year pharmacy program. School of Education has um, both primary and secondary education majors. We also have a law school on campus, which is great if you're interested in kind of the political world or the legal world. Um, and so you don't have to choose right away either. Um, the, the largest major coming in for first years is actually open. So if you are still figuring it out or still narrowing it down, that's totally fine. And you'll still get an advisor assigned to you to kind of help that process along. Uh, we also have over 140 student organizations. This is a very involved campus. Students typically do more than one thing. So whether you're playing intramurals in the evenings and going to um, a student activities board meeting in the daytime, um, you really kind of combine interests and make this your own experience. Um, we're also not a suitcase campus. Um, like Representative from Marquette said, um, uh, students are really making their own fun on the nights and weekends here. 
Um, one of the reasons why students stick around on the weekends is because over nine, uh, se about 70% are from out of state. Uh, so if you're from Minnesota, I know a lot of folks are tuning in from there today. Um, there's a lot of students from out of Iowa. And so you're really kind of exploring Iowa. Uh, but we have half of our graduating class each year stay in central Iowa. So we're attracting talent um, and folks are sticking around. Uh, we're also division one for all of our athletics and students get to attend the games for free, uh, which is a blast. Um, obviously, men's basketball is featured here and this past year we went to March Madness, which was very exciting and uh, Des Moines, uh, Drake is really the hometown team of Des Moines. You can always find Griff at the athletic events. Uh, the biggest athletic event that we have is the Drake Relays. This happens every spring and draws in um, alumni and students and the community to come watch everybody from high schoolers all the way up through Olympians compete. Um, that photo of the girls covered in paint is from our street painting event, which is a major tradition uh, that happens around Relays time. Uh, and it's just a big paint fight, um, which is really fun and a, a tradition that we hold close to, close to home. Uh, so yeah, I, I talked about Des Moines a little bit, but Des Moines is the capital city of Iowa. It's the fastest growing um, metro in the Midwest. And so it's really on the up. Um, it also is the second safest um, city in America um, from the US News and World Report. So those are both really great things to keep in mind. Um, and those internship opportunities are really uh, very, they're all over the place. Um, they're all over Des Moines and our Drake students get to the, get the first pick for those. So I also wanna mention lifetime of value. Um, this 95.5%, that big number there is the number of Drake students in 2020 who are employed or pursuing a graduate school after just six months. And that's the class that graduated right into the pandemic. Um, and so we're really proud of having that many students already employed or already taking the next step towards their future. Uh, Pre-pandemic, that number had never dropped below 90%. Uh, so really high success rates of our graduates. We also rank number one in Iowa for mid-career earnings. Um, so not only do you get the job out of college, you're also advancing in your career rather quickly. Great, so when you go to apply to Drake, you'll notice that we are a test optional school. We've been this way for about six years. Um, the test score pathway is pretty typical. You submit your transcript and your ACT um, or the SAT. The test optional path, you're again gonna submit that transcript with your GPA um, and you can choose between an interview or an essay. The interview would be with an admission counselor like myself. So it's not too intimidating. Um, definitely a little bit of pressure, but we try to make it as comfortable as possible um, to see how well prepared you are for college. Um, an essay and letters of recommendation are also um, optional parts of uh, the application that can strengthen it. And I'll wrap up with this slide about scholarships. Great. So I'll leave us on um, this contact page and then I will drop our, um, I'll drop my personal contact into the chat as well. So you can copy and paste it um, if needed, but I will hand it back over to Nashira, our facilitator. Thanks everybody. Thank you so much, Drake University. We'll now have Normandale Community College. My name is Taylor Gore and I'm a student at Normandale Community College. Normandale provides a wide variety of high quality courses at an affordable price. Let me show you why Normandale is a great place to be. Normandale offers an extraordinary education with an exceptional value with a tuition three times less than the University of Minnesota and six times less than the average cost of a private four-year university in Minnesota. We are the largest community college in the state, but our campus is still a close-knit community because of the high-touch services and resources provided by instructors in student service areas. There are 75 degrees and certificates and over 600 courses that get you to where you want to go. Normandale's online and in-person course offerings are the largest in any two-year college in Minnesota. Whether you are looking to take a wide variety of quality STEM courses, pursue a career in nursing or dental hygiene, complete an AFA or business degree in nationally accredited programs, explore the vast liberal arts and humanities offerings, or complete general courses for the Minnesota Transfer Curriculum, you can find the program to start your academic journey. Normandale has a 24 to 1 student to teacher ratio. Our instructors have received regional and national awards honoring their teaching excellence and commitment to student success. 
Along with quality academic offerings, Normandale provides top-notch online student resources through its advising and counseling departments, tutoring center, and office for students with disabilities. Those resources combine with comprehensive academic support programs like the Academy of Math and Science and TRIO Student Support Services create opportunities for a well-rounded educational experience. My name is Shelby Lingle and I'm a student at Normandale Community College. Normandale provides a great student experience inside and outside of the classroom. Let me show you why Normandale is the place to be. Developing leaders inside and outside of the classroom is an important part of the mission at Normandale. We have over 50 student life clubs and organizations, including a nationally recognized Phi Theta Kappa Honor Society and an award-winning student senate. Programs like Pillars of Leadership and the Normandale Program Board provide many opportunities to develop skills in leadership and organization. Through these experiences, we strive to create a diverse and inclusive campus community that will help you accomplish your goals. Normandale's campus has a modern look and feel and plenty of open outdoor spaces to enjoy when the weather is nice. The Partnership Center and the COP Student Center have accessible group study areas with natural light and many social opportunities. Our Japanese garden, campus green, newly updated courtyard, and hiking trail provide beautiful outdoor spaces to enjoy on campus. You will also find updated classrooms and computer centers and highly collaborative lab areas. This state-of-the-art feel continues to expand through our College Services Renovation Project, which will provide a new cafe area, centralized student services, and updated classrooms and group study areas. Normandale offers 13 bachelor's degrees through partner universities on campus and is a top transfer institution for Minnesota State Universities, the University of Minnesota, and private universities across Minnesota. We have partnered with Minnesota State four-year universities to offer 19 transfer pathways, the most of any two-year college in the state. Along with local universities, Normandale students have proven they can start here and transfer anywhere, as they have recently transferred to Harvard, Cornell, Columbia, Duke, USC, and Michigan, to name a few. No matter what your final goal is, Normandale will navigate the way there. To find out more, contact our admissions office at 952-358-8201 or email admissions at normandale.edu. Hello, everybody. My daughter goes, that's where you work? This is Normandale, Normandale Community College. My name is Javier Salinas. And I just have a few more seconds to uh, share just a few things um, that I would like to share today. Uh, let me just bring this uh, other screen and then I'll share it with you guys. Just bear with me a second, okay? Let's take a look one more time. Let's see. Looks like I'm not able to share the entire screen, so I will do this. All right, so Normandale, um, you saw in the video, our school is very large, close to 15,000 students. 40% of them are first generation students, students of color. So when you're coming to Normandale, you're gonna experience that. We're part of the Minnesota state system. That means that we're connected with other uh, 29 school, uh, school sisters community college as well as technical schools. And then of course, seven state universities. Lastly, this is the last, time that, the last thing that I'm gonna share. Many students wondering, what does it take for me to get accepted into a community college? One thing, a high school uh, graduation or a GED. Definitely you're doing a lot this afternoon, learning from all of us. At the end of the day, guys, is about what you want and some of the things that you want to dream and accomplish those dreams. Sometimes the universities that you're selecting at first might not be the good fit, but we're here for you, uh, sharing with you some of the things that we uh, offer. Lastly, community college, I would say one of the biggest advantage is the affordability. So thank you so much for enjoying us uh, today and I will see you uh, in a little bit later. Thank you, Normandale. We'll now have Minot State University. Just want to hop on and say welcome everyone. I'm from Minot State University. My name is Lexi Clark. I'm an admissions counselor here. Um, th again, thanks for hopping on and sharing your afternoon with us. Um, some of you are probably wondering where Minot's at. 
Well, if you know where Minnesota and Montana, Montana are at, we are right in the middle. Um, we're in the middle of the state located to the left. Um, very, uh, I would say rural com community here. We have about 50,000 um, people that live in Minot. Uh, Minot State considers um, consists of 3,000 students. We have about 200 online. Um, there is about 200 in our graduate program currently. Um, we offer about over 100 field of areas of study. 90% of our grads are either employed or in continuing their education. We offer in-state tuition to all of our students. Um, the average financial aid students get is about $7,922 and 89% receive um, grants and scholarships. A little bit about our residence halls at Minot State. We have two community style and then two suite style. Our community style residence halls are Cook and McCullough. Um, they uh, consider, uh, consist of one roommate, you have two desks and chairs in there, and you guys share a closet, and then your bathrooms are out in the hallway. Um, Crane and Lara are our suite style, so you'll be rooming with um, three other people, and then you share a bathroom. Um, Lara is our le learning living community on campus, so they're very engaging with their residents. Um, they have Pinterest nights, movies night, and are always being active with their students. And there's also um, a questionnaire that they can fill out and other additional things. So if they have an idea to in their residence hall, they can always pitch that um, plan to them and they can have that fun activity. Um, our meal plan options, we have three. We have the premium meal plan, which is 19 meals a week with 150 dining dollars. Um, that 150 dining dollars is split up into the two semesters. So you get 75 in the fall and then 75 in the spring. Um, you can use that in our C store here. And then we also have a Starbucks on campus that you can use it in. Um, our base plan is 19 meals a week. And then our block plan is, our block 160 plan is 160 meals a semester plus that 350 dining box, which is also split into the two semesters. Um, I tell our athletes that's probably the best plan for you because you're always on the road traveling and our meal plans do not roll over to the next week. So to save some money there, I suggest doing the Black 160. Some information about Minot State, um, our annual costs um, for tuition fees a year is $8,164. Um, rooms and meals is about $6,600 for a total of $14,764. Um, depending on scholarships and more, this can reduce your tuition and fee costs. Um, at Minot State, we take all awards and scholarships. Um, you don't have to choose one or the other. Most of our athletes are granted scholarships. Um, most of our programs do have scholarships um, with them as well. Um, we tell them to reach out to the program contact and to tell them what scholarships they are eligible for. Um, our financial aid opened up in October, so students are able to apply. We just say look for the deadlines. Um, Mind the State also offers a um, four-year award. Um, it's based off of your GPA and your ACT, SAT score. Um, I'll use myself in, as an example. I got a 25 and I had a 3.6 GPA, so I was awarded $1,000 every year for my four years. So it was split up into the two semesters, so 500 in the um fall and then 500 in the spring. And again, all of our students get in-state tuition. Some majors um, that we offer at Minot State are listed on this page. We have pre-professional pre tracks. We have the graduate program, undergrad certifications, again, 100 plus fields of study. Um, our nursing program actually just installed an OR simulator. So we do get a lot of nursing students here and they're very happy about that simulator that we have. It's pretty cool. Um, our freshman admissions checklist. So we ask all of our students to apply and pay the $35 fee. Um, again, we need your in progress high school transcript. And then once you're out of high school, we need your official high school transcript. Um, our ACT, SAT is recommended, not required. And then if you are taking dual credits, we will need your official transcript for that semester. I mean, that year. Um, our admission requirements are a 2.75 GPA or higher, and then a high school core. So those four English is three math, three lab science, three social sciences. 
and then a statement of intent. And this is a little essay. We always tell our students, if you're really good at writing, three, um, three to four sentences is fine. And if you have complete capitalization, punctuation, and um, spelling, you should be good to go. And we always ask, talk about why you want to come to my state and what your future plans are. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Um, my information is at the bottom. Um, call, text, email. I'm available. If you have any questions for my state, you can go to www.askmsu.com and we can answer any questions there. Good luck with your um, college looking, I would say. And if you need help, just let us know. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Minot State uh, University. Now we'll have St. Mary's University of Minnesota. Hi, everyone. It is so great to be here tonight. My name is Abby Callahan, and I am one of the Minnesota counselors for St. Mary's. I serve the Twin Cities area, and I'm also a 2020 graduate of St. Mary's. So a little bit about us. We are a private liberal arts college, which means you'll be taking classes in tons of different areas throughout your time here. And we are also Roman Catholic and Lasallian. So the biggest thing to take from the Lasallian part is that we value faith, service, and community. And our institution is about um, 1,100 undergrad students. You can definitely feel the sense of community on campus. So this is just a little bit about our scholarships, financial aid. I know when you look at private school tuition, it looks like a big scary number. So the most important part of this slide is the scholarships. Just for getting accepted to St. Mary's, you're eligible for our merit-based scholarships that range from 23 to 27,000. So every single student that gets admitted will receive one of those can also get a scholarship just for coming to visit campus your senior year. If you have any interest in the arts, you can audition for one of our art scholarships. If you go to a Catholic high school or one of your parents or grandparents went to St. Mary's, you can also receive a scholarship for that. Our application process is pretty simple. All we need is your official transcript and a personal statement. We are test optional. Uh, and the only other time you would have to submit like a letter of recommendation or a resume is for our two premier programs, which is our three plus two physician's assistant program, which is a collaboration with Mayo Clinic and our new nursing program, which is new this year. We are located in Winona, Minnesota, which is in southeastern Minnesota, right on the Mississippi River. And southeastern Minnesota was actually just ranked in the top 20 places in the country to see fall colors. So if you're gonna come visit, I would definitely recommend you do it sometime soon. Uh, and we have a population of about 26,000 in town. And we have three colleges in town. so. When classes start back up, it turns into a little bit more of a college town with ourselves, Winona State University and Minnesota State College Southeast, equaling about 11,000 college students. So that means there's tons of fun things to do in town. If you're big on the outdoors, we have um, trails, lakes, the river, uh, lots of hiking just right on our campus. If you're a big fan of coffee, I think I counted 12 or 13 different local coffee shops in town, as well as great local restaurants, tons of arts and music festivals, and a marine art museum right on the river. If you are looking for a little bit of a bigger city, uh, Minneapolis, Rochester, and La Crosse are just short drives away from us. So on our campus, 85% of our students live on campus all four years. So a lot of that is to do with our many different options for dorms. So even though we have a smaller campus size with 1,100 students, we have 11 different dorms to choose from. So everything from a single dorm to a nine-person apartment with multiple bathrooms and laundry rooms in there. So there's really a wide range of options, which keeps our students on campus and within that community. And though all of our buildings are no further than a 10 minute walk in between, uh, we have 450 acres of campus. So all the way back into the bluffs there, we have hiking trails, a trout stream, a disc golf course, and in the winter, uh, cross country skiing trails. We're also walking distance to a few different restaurants right down the hill. And if you don't feel like walking and you don't have a car on campus, Winona Transit does pick up right from in front of our admissions office year round. 
So what are you actually gonna be doing when you're on our campus? So 65% of our students participate in some extracurricular club or activity. So some big ones are our student activities committee and student senate. So if you want to bring a fun event on campus or make some changes and um, help improve our campus even more, you can join those clubs. Uh, campus ministry does a lot of volunteer work. They do uh, normally a volunteer trip over spring break. Uh, we have various study abroad options from short term to long term and also uh, great professional development with our alumni relations and our career services office. They're always having resume building workshops, interviews, interview trip uh, tips and tricks, and overall we have 50 different clubs on campus. We are a D3 school for sports and 32% of our students are student athletes. So that means professors and coaches understand your busy schedules and they're both gonna know how to balance that out and make sure you're getting everything done that you need to. If you don't wanna go the NCAA level, we also have five intramural sports sessions throughout the year. So everything from ping pong to wiffle ball to soccer to basketball and 10 club sport opportunities. If you still wanna compete, but just not as rigorous of a schedule. And we have 40 plus majors on our campus. Our biggest departments are business, the sciences and education. So we just built a new um, educational building that has a new suite for our nursing program, a maker space, a stock room simulation lab for our business students and tons of other cool things. And 100% of our classes are taught by professors. And we have an 11 to one student faculty ratio with the average class size of 20. So you're definitely getting a very personal experience on our campus. And if you have any questions about us, wanna come visit, we are open for visits and all of our contact info is listed right there. Thank you. Thank you so much. I will have our last um, <clears throat> college of the day, Pacific University of Oregon, Oregon sorry. Perfect, thank you so much. So we're gonna jump out to the West Coast now. And my name is Derek. I am your admissions counselor here at Pacific. So I get to work with all the students coming from the area of Minnesota and actually the whole Midwest, but you'll get to work with me. And today I get to talk to you a little bit more about the opportunities you're gonna to have to become a boxer here at Pacific University in Oregon. So as our name implies, we are out in Oregon and I mentioned we're near the West Coast. So we're in the Northwest corner of Oregon in a town called Forest Grove. So it's about 30 minutes from downtown Portland, about an hour from the coast. And the great thing is it's a smaller town where we're right out in the country. You can be hiking in the Tillamook National Forest that you can see behind me in less than 15 minutes, but we are still part of the Portland Metro system. So you can use mass transportation to get all the way out to um, Portland International Airport, which is where you'd be flying into. And so our students have access to all of those great things that come with the outdoors and the Pacific Northwest but also being only 15 minutes away from places like Nike, Intel, Xerox, Columbia, all have world headquarters right here in and around Portland. So we have the opportunity to connect with those big businesses as well. And Pacific itself is a small private liberal arts university. And the great thing when you apply to Pacific is you're gonna use the common application, it's completely free and it applies for all of your merit scholarship and your application to Pacific. So you don't have to apply to a separate program, a specific major, you don't have to apply to an honors college because at Pacific, when you're applying, we know you might change your mind a little bit. And we treat all of our 75 different majors, minors and programs as if you're at an honors college level. So we're a smaller school in that we have about 1900 undergraduate students. We do have about 2000 grad students in 36 different programs, mostly in the health professions, but education, creative writing and um, social work as well. Undergraduate students, the 75 different majors, you're going to have small classes, average class size of 19 students, much like you've heard from other schools that in uh, interaction with the professors where 100% of the classes are taught by professors. But at Pacific, the other big important thing is that you get a four year guarantee. So you're in and out of Pacific in four years with that education set up for you rather than having to do a fifth year or a sixth year or a victory lab, but that for any of those programs you might be interested in, you're going to find that. And at Pacific, our most popular majors are typically in the health professions, but also we have nationally regionally ranked education, business and creative writing programs, as well as new majors in sports management, sports communication and outdoor leadership. But no matter which program you choose, you're actually gonna be able to start doing job shadowing internships and research freshman and sophomore year. 
not waiting till you're a junior or senior, because we know it's really important that you build up that. I'm here that you'll see that 93% of our students are in the workforce, going to graduate school and are employed within six months of graduation. So they do have that real life experience to back it up. We also know that students are gonna need an outlet. So our students are very busy on campus. They come from all over the US. In fact, about 50% of our students come from outside of Oregon. So you'll not be the only student left here on the weekend when everybody else goes home. In fact, about 15% of our students come from Hawaii. So you can join some of our 70 different clubs and organizations on campus, including our Hawaii club that puts on the largest luau anywhere on the mainland US. And you are all welcome to join in and learn how to dance on stage with your friends. Or maybe that means joining in student government, a different religious or ethnic background where you find your passion or joining the performing arts for music, dance, and theater where you don't need to major or minor, or being part of our 24 varsity, 28 intramural, or 10 club sports. And for varsity sports, we compete in the NCAA Division III Northwest Conference. So you're gonna see a lot of students being very, very active while they're on campus. We wanna give that opportunity to all students and it does not affect that four-year guarantee, whether you're a varsity athlete, you wanna study abroad, or a double major, you have that ability while you're here. We also know that coming from out of state, the idea of living on campus is a big one. So we uh, require that you live on campus your first two years, but you can live on campus for all four years. In fact, about 65% of our students do live on campus all four years because of the opportunities to live in anything from a traditional residence hall setup all the way over to our apartment style residence halls that you can see in the picture. We also want you to take what you're learning in the classroom outside to learn how to solve problems. Again, building you up for that plan after graduation. So that means joining our outdoor pursuits trips into the Pacific Northwest, where you can learn everything from rock climbing and surfing on the Oregon coast to taking trips into the Pacific Northwest and learning about hiking or natural resources there. Maybe that also means studying abroad for you. We offer 27 sites around the world, as well as two to three week travel classes. And again, those do not impact your graduation plan. And we also love that our students love to give back. As one of the president's uh, community, community service colleges, we're very proud of the amount of community service our students do, both here locally and during some of those two to three week travel classes, they're able to give back to the communities. To apply to Pacific and get admitted, again, you're gonna use that Common App, it's all online. That's also gonna apply you for our academic merit scholarships. And just so you know, at Pacific, there's no in-state or out-of-state tuition and no in-state or out-of-state scholarships. So you're looking at the exact same opportunities as if you were applying from Oregon. Our merit scholarships range from 15 to $27,000 per year. And just like admission, they are test optional. If you wanna apply with test scores, fantastic, but you can be admitted and receive our highest merit scholarship without test scores. We also have opportunities for special interest and talent awards and things like music, dance, and theater. And for those of you who are seniors, if you'd like to learn more about Pacific, you can check out our senior preview scholarship days where you'll get more of a information about Pacific than you would in six minutes, talk to current students and professors, and be able to earn a thousand dollar a year scholarship. So I know you're learning lots this afternoon, so please feel free to reach out to me. I'll make sure I put my information into the chat as well. As your admissions counselor, I look forward to hearing from you and working with you to get more information about becoming a boxer. Thank you so much. All right, thank you so much. Um, if everyone could join me on screen uh, for a quick Q and A. All right, perfect. So Marquette University, uh, what advice would you give someone going through the college admissions, oh, the college search process? Yeah, that's a great question. I would say that if um, those of you in the audience tonight have learned anything from, from our time together, we hope it's that admissions counselors are really eager to connect with you, whether it's virtually or in person. We want to be advocates and cheerleaders for you, and, and we can't do that if, if we don't get to know you. So please do um, help us put faces to your names for when we're reading your file and, and making sure that you're up to date on the application process, scholarship review, and, and as you consider college fit. So help us along in that, and we hope to, to meet you down the road. All right, uh, Drake University, uh, what's one thing you want students to remember about your school? That's a great question. Um, I think that it's most likely that students will probably remember Griff um, because he is uh, fun and kind of funny and we love having a live mascot. Um, but I hope that when you think about Griff and you think about um, Drake, that you also remember all of the connections and opportunities that you have. Um, this is a lot of information. It's a lot to dig through. Um, and I hope that you're finding that, you're, I hope you're finding a good fit and a school that is gonna help you sort through those options and really focus in on what success looks like for you. Um, so if I can be a part of that in any way, um, please feel free to reach out and let me know. All right. 
Normandale Community College, um, what is one myth you'd like to debunk about the college admissions process? Definitely. Uh, a lot of students, they always worry about, am I going to get in? And this is something that I talk quickly in my presentation. For community college, really, you only need a high school diploma. Uh, or you can get the equivalents, which would be the GED. And that is important because having a high school diploma or GED, not only you get accepted to a community college, but uh, you will have access to financial aid. And then use community college as a step ladder to the next big university. You sign them my presentation, some of my students, they have attended Harvard University, attending community college. So of course, community college is not for everybody, but if you feel like I need a place to maybe take it a slow, uh, cheaper price, maybe community college is a good option. All right, thank you. Uh, Minot uh, State University, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? I would tell them to book some tours um, and meet the program of contact. Um, when you do the tours, at least you get to see what your campus has to offer. And you can go through all the buildings, meet some teachers, maybe some faculty, um, and then students that are on that campus. Um, and then afterwards, I would suggest um, having an admission appointment because then you get that information about that college. Um, and then if you are really knowing what you want to go into, that program contact is going to help you set up your four years. <clears throat> Sorry, St. Mary's University of Minnesota. What is one thing you want students to remember about your school? I think one thing I want students to remember about St. Mary's is just the community that we really promote throughout everything. Um, you can really see it just from your first tour on campus. Uh, you'll see staff faculty walking around and every single person will stop to say hi to you and will talk your ear off forever if they could. Um, and really it just goes through into our classes, into extracurriculars, down to uh, different departments having barbecues with their students at the end of the year to a, uh, I know the education department always has a kickball tournament that is seniors versus the professors. So it's the little things like that that really build up and make the experience really memorable on our campus. Okay. Um, and then uh, Pacific University, Oregon, what's one myth you'd like to debunk on the college admissions process? Sure. So I know, I'm not sure it's a myth, but I know one place a lot of students get stuck is you need to know that we don't need everything for your application to all come in on the exact same day in like one big envelope. So there's so many students who wait for something to come in and then, so they wait to finish their application. So then it misses a deadline, but it's not like that anymore. Most of us as colleges are at least tech savvy enough to say, okay, we've got this piece. We can put it in your file and then wait for the next piece to come in. So don't wait to turn something in. If you have it ready to go to a college, send it in, get one thing checked off your checklist and then move on to the next step. So I want to thank you all for being here today um, and thank you all for joining us. Uh, when you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick five question survey and we'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. Uh, we encourage you to check back to the schedule and sign up for more sessions. You'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other session recordings at strivescan.com forward slash Minnesota. Thank you and enjoy your evenings and your days.